it is not the will of God that all Nigerians should be in trouble. Today, you see, from one government, we will be crying. This one oh, is not doing well. Oh. Another one will come and be worse. Another one will come and be worse. Another one will come and be worse. I remember when Nigerians were crying. Oh, why can you make uh, the price of petroleum to be 93 naira? We no agree, 97 naira. For what? Bring it back to 60. <laughs> From 60, what happened? Eh? 60 to 120 something. 120 something to 190. And they say, ah, okay, let's manage it that way. And they manage it from 190 something now to <laughs> times four. Even some places that burn it on 1,000 naira per liter. We cannot say cry. <laughs> Amen. Do you think it's the plan of God for us to suffer? Most of times it's our ignorance. Because we cannot hold people accountable. We cannot stand on our feet and fight for our right. We cannot say this is what we want and this is what we don't want. So anything that they give us, we must uh, continue to take it like that. If it's to cry, we continue to cry the cry. May that not be your portion. Because God has a plan for you and I. Let the plan of God work for us. So we are going to itemize all these cares of God and the thought of God. Number one, God cares for us. Tell your neighbor, God cares for us. God cares for us. God cares for us. When you know that God cares for you, anywhere you're going, you should be confident enough. Don't be moving and lose focus. Amen? Don't ever start anything and give up on the way. Whatever you start with God, you have to know that God cares about whatever you start with him. And so, when you know that somebody is with you and somebody cares, you don't need to worry. Because the Bible calls us, he said, we are the sheep of his pasture. What's the meaning of sheep of his pasture? Sheep of his pasture is that we are the people that he takes care of, gives us everything that we need in life. And so, your absolute trust and your absolute faith in him and your absolute confidence in him is just your ticket to enjoy the cares of God. But if you have doubt, am I sure? How can God care for me? Look at, I am alone. I don't have uncle. I don't have brother. I don't have sister. I don't have neighbor. This, that, that. You begin to present many things that oppose God's care. You begin to oppose and bring many things that, that disprove God. Some people will go as far as saying, I'm not sure that God is aware of my situation. I'm not sure that God is interested. I'm not sure that there is God. I'm not sure that God knows what to do. I'm not sure that God is interested in me. God has turned his back. It's like God has forsaken me. It's like God has abandoned me. All those words, they are very, very, very harmful to our faith. Any word that comes out of your mouth that disproves God's ability to help you, to support you, to back you up, to care for you, that word is harmful to our faith. Anytime you open your mouth, God has forsaken me. God has abandoned me. God has turned his back. God is not interested in me. God is punishing me. God is this. God is that. Anytime those words comes out of your mouth, it becomes an antidote that destroys our faith. Never you allow your faith to be destroyed by the things you say with your mouth. Never you allow your faith to be weakened by the things you confess with your mouth. The confession of your mouth goes a long way. Amen. That's why every time you must say that God will make a way. God is going to help me. God is going to support me. God is going to back me up. God is going to lift me up. God is going to heal me. Even when you are feeling that sickness in your body, declare that God will heal you. They are not hearing me. Oh. You are not hearing me. Even when the road is rough and tough, declare that God is leading me. That's why David in the Bible was a man after God's heart. When David is passing through pains, he will say, the Lord is with me. I shall not want. 
the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even when David is passing through death, he will say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You declare that positivity, that is where your victory comes from. Can we see Matthew chapter 10? Matthew chapter 10. Let's look at verse 29. Matthew 10, 29. What did he say? If you are there, shout hallelujah. And not two sparrows sold for a fat things, and the one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. Oh my God. Praise God. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Praise God. The very hair. I don't think there's anybody who worries about how many number of hair that he has. Amen? Amen? I don't think there's anybody in the church here or anywhere who says, ah, it's like when I was combing my hair this morning, I lost one. How many people comb their hair this morning? You know you comb your hair. Either you brush it as a woman or you comb it as a man. Raise your hand up. I want to see your hand. Amen? Did any of you worry about how many hairs that left your head? <laughs> and let me tell you the truth so many of us lost like 30 hair today eh? 30 out of our hairs has lost today by the virtue of the combing because you cannot comb your hair without losing one or two is it possible eh? but I didn't see anybody here who said oh man of God I have a problem now I lost some hair as I was combing my hair <laughs> Amen. But did you know that God is interested even in the hair? One that lost is interested. Praise God. Praise God. God is very much interested even in the single hair that is on your hair that lost. God is interested. So if God could be interested in things as little as that your hair, how much more the vital things in your life? Why will God not care? Praise God. Then God has a plan for us. God has what? God has what? Listen to me. If you like, be a man that everybody calls foolish man. If you like, be the weakest person amongst us. If you like, be the uneducated individual among us. No matter how useless people will look at you. No matter how foolish people will look at you. God, as far as you, are, you believe, God still have plans for you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And what is his plan? First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. I know that after this message, your life can never remain the same. You will change your thinking towards God. And your life will never remain the same. Everything will turn around for your good. I say everything will turn around for your good. Everything will turn around for your good. Chapter 2 verse 9. Praise God. If you're there, you shout hallelujah. If you're there, shout hallelujah. If you're there, shout hallelujah. What did he say? What did he say? Verse 9. He said, But ye are a chosen generation. Oh my God. Oh my God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Oh my God. And a an holy nation. A peculiar people. That ye should show forth the praise of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What is the plan? The plan is that we should move out of darkness and enter into the light. Praise God. Move out of what? Out of darkness and enter into the light. God does not want you to walk in darkness. When you walk in darkness, you will stumble and you will fall. 
But he wants you to walk in the light. Because when you walk in the light, you will never stumble and you will never fall. If you walk in the light, you are walking in the light to be established forever. And when God has perfected all his plans in your life, no man can bring you down. If the Nigeria economy like, let it go the worst. From where we are, let them continue to go worse. As they go worse, God will never leave us. God will never forsake us. God will never abandon us. He will never turn his back on us. He will never reject us. Amen. It is the devil that will cry, not you. Amen. It is the devil that uh, devil that will what? It will be the one to cry, not you. You can cry. Tell your neighbor I can't cry. God will not make me cry. I will be the one to be happy, to rejoice, and to remain blessed. Amen. Because the devil, the enemy, wants to see that you cry. But you are not the one to cry when you know the plan of God, that God has a better plan, that no matter what the enemy do, they will be the one to cry the cry. You will not cry. I say you will not cry. You will never cry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. You will never cry. Amen. You will never what? Cry. It is the devil that will cry. So if you are crying, if you are crying, you don't know the plan. Amen. Oh God, why now? If you love me and you care for me, why do you allow this? Whatever God allows in your life is for your promotion. Amen. I convert everything that God allows in your life to be your promotion. Amen. If you have a delay, the delay is a promotion. Amen. You are not hearing me. Amen. I said the delay is a promotion. Amen. A lady that believed in God, always praying and asking the Lord to bless her. It got to a point in the family, the three sisters, all of them got married, remaining her. And she's a devoted believer that believes in God, they have faith in God. And she is a, 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 a certified nurse. She has degree in nursing. And uh, she was about from 35. From 35, people begin to mock her. With all your education, with all your being a believer, with all of this, you are not married. Your sisters have married. Their sisters, the sisters of the lady, got married. Some marry carpenters in the village, marry some kind of handwork people in the village. And they are there. Some of them are giving birth to one, two. And the sister was not married. The sister entered the nine, 39 years. And one of the programs right there in the village, the sister came before God. I was crying unto God. Say, God, should I remain like this, not married? And the message came to her. I want to give you the best. <laughs> that is why I have not given you a husband. He said, eh, I want to give you the best because you are the one that will make this family proud. Somebody clap their hand for Jesus. Hallelujah. Can God be late? I'm asking you a question. Can God be late? It is human beings that are late. God can never be late. In everything that has to do with God, God can never ever be late. Because God can time the time to time himself. God is timeless. Because even a thousand years that we call, oh, my years, uh, uh, 10,000 years, is now 10, about uh, 50 years, I'm 70 years. That your 70 years and your 10 years and your, your 30, 50, 80 years. It's not up to two hours in the sight of God. If God wants to check it by his own timing, your, your, your 80 years may not even be up to two hours. So you are crying for two hours. Two hours you are crying. Somebody said, be patient, I will visit you. And he said, don't worry, I'm coming to meet you. Wait for me, I'm coming. And the one hour you are crying, why you never come? Two hours. Hey, you want to kill me? It's two hours. You are crying. 
if you can see from the way God sees things, if you can look at the mindset of God, you will know that even that 40 years or 80 years or 60 years, even 90 years, 100 years of Sarah and, uh, and, uh, and, and Abraham, it's not up to some hours in the sight of God. Just a few, few hours. Praise God, somebody. And as the sister was crying, God said, relax, I want to give you the best. And she praised God and relaxed. And immediately she clocked 40 years. That this young man that studied in America, live in America, working in America, well paid in America, told the family, please, I need a wife. And the wife I need must be a nurse. And the nurse I want, I want somebody from 40 years up. <laughs> Amen. They begin to search. They go up and down. Anywhere they come, oh, it doesn't meet up. How old are you? I am 29. Oh, sorry. Oh, you, uh, what did you study? Nothing. How old are you? I am 25. Oh, you, what? Until somebody now, that sister is so, so, so. And he said, ah, that is the type of woman I want to marry. That was how both of them got connected. And they found out that he is a nurse. He said, fat, everything he has asked God, God has done it. The marriage of that sister took over the whole village. Her marriage was celebrated for three days in the village. Everybody, the convoys, the people that matter, that even went to school with the young man, all of them were in that village. And he said, before I will come and marry her, I need to build a house in that village. And they built a house for them because of the lady. Not yet married though, but they have to build a house. Under two weeks, a house was built. Praise God. Stop equating God as a wicked God. Stop looking at God as God who is not aware of you. See, I told people, I said, the problem of this country, Nigeria, does not take God anything, no, just a world country Nigeria will settle. Amen? What is needed in this country is just a word. If everybody will believe and the one word is drop, everywhere in this country will be okay. But would they agree? They will not agree. Would they accept? They will not accept because of the bad eggs. Praise God. So don't look at your condition and use it to judge God. Oh, is there God and they allow me uh, malaria? Malaria. What is malaria? Malaria is net that you did not cover yourself. <laughs> when you did not cover yourself with the net, then malaria will come. Praise God. Praise God. The third one God will not forsake us. Psalm 94. Psalm 94. If you're there, we'll read together. Psalm 94. Praise God. God will not what? Will God forsake you? Will God forsake me? Will God forsake us? Oh yeah? Let's read. Psalm 94. Are you there? If you're there, shout hallelujah. We are going to read verse 1. Psalm 94 verse 1. He said, Oh Lord, to whom vengeance belongeth. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongeth. Shew thyself. Lift up thyself. Thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utterly and speak hard things and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves praise god 